Today you'll be seeing a variety of fabrics that can work for making pants and some that don't work for making pants. It'll be a practical video and a guide to choose the fabric in this fun series called Let's Make Easy Pants. Keep watching! Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing. Welcome back if you're always stopping by and if you're new to the channel here you will always find practical sewing content that could be super useful for your own projects at home. So if you think that's a cool idea go ahead and subscribe to this community, tap on the bell so you receive notifications when new videos go live and you don't miss out. This is episode two of a mini series created for you to motivate you to make your first pair of easy pants. Thank you so much for your response to episode one that discussed five easy pants patterns that you might choose to make your first ever pair of pants. This mini series is geared towards all of us who have struggled to make pants, you who haven't taken the leap yet and haven't made pants or you have done a few times but are not happy with the results and that you feel you could have had some guidance. That is what this series is about and we'll be covering different aspects. Keep your eyes open for that because it's going to be super practical and I'm sure it's going to help you have a really good experience making pants because making pants is super fun and can be super satisfying, you know, once you're in this journey committed, of course. Today is all about the fabric. I've always been aware that fabric choice has a great impact on the result of finished garments and for pants as well. It's not just about finding a style of pant that you like and just choosing some random fabric. Things can go wrong. Um, in the feet, in mechanical sense as well, sometimes seems ripping or just not draping and falling the way that you had envisioned in your mind that this project was going to be on your body. So fabric plays a huge role in how we feel about the clothes that we make. And even myself, some of my sewing fails as such have sometimes been related to fabric choice and not the actual sewing as such. And I'll be showing you the fabric, how it drapes, some of the properties and why it could be good for this style of pan or for another not be. We shall see, so let's hop into it. The first types of fabrics I have next to me are rayon and rayon blends. So rayon is considered semi-natural, semi-synthetic because the origin is from cellulose fibers that come from wood. But, you know, it's, it's quite a process to get that material into a fabric. So it does go through a process and chemicals and a lot of like technical things to get to this fabric. But it is a really nice fabric to wear. It, it can actually imitate silk, wool. You know, you can, they can trick you into thinking these types of fabrics feel like that when it's actually rayon or viscose. Depends on where you live, what this fabric might be called. Usually, it's really cool, it's very wearable, it drapes beautifully, it absorbs moisture, it's a great fabric to use in hot climate. And one of the things about this fabric is that when you wash it, it'll shrink. It'll shrink quite a bit. If you have a length of fabric and you wash it and dry it, it'll probably shrink up to 15%. 15% is a considerable amount of fabric to lose on the length. On the width, you know, from edge to edge, the fabric shrinks less than from top to bottom. Please pre-wash your fabric before you sew it because it all shrinks, it, it does. You don't wanna go through the effort of making pants with your crisp new fabric from the shop and not having washed it. Um, no, <laughs> there's no excuse for that. And then you're just gonna end up with super tight, tiny short pants after you wash them you know, you might be really happy the first time you wear your garment, but then it's going to be small. I promise you, it will. It will usually be small if you don't pre-wash your fabric. We have 100% rayon fabrics. Uh, they are very easy to find and purchase. They are buttery soft. They feel cool. The drape is amazing. This is a printed one with a dark background. One thing I will say about rayon for pants. Rayon is not a strong fabric. It, the seams on it are not the strongest of seams. If you wanna make really fitted pants that when you sit, the seams are going to be stretching and there's gonna be like mechanical force on them from your body, they will not hold up for a very long time. This fabric is delicate when you wash it. When it's wet, it can easily rip. 
so it can get damaged in the wash if you're not careful if you just like throw it in there with your towels on this really vicious washing cycle so it is a delicate fabric and I love the fabric I make pants with these types of fabrics but the style of pants I choose to make with 100% rayon that is super drapey and nice are the ones that are wider. All the pull-on pants that I've mentioned to you in the previous video, there were ones that had wider legs than others, ones that had more ease than others. The Arden pants from Helen's Closet were the slimmest feet at the hips with two inches of positive ease. I think that is still a good amount of positive ease to have at the hips when you're standing. When you're sitting down, that might reduce to maybe a little bit less so I would probably not choose 100% rayon to make the Arden pants, but the free range slacks have a wider leg cropped option. Same as the Cowder pants from Cashmere, they are wider leg. I would choose these flowing, thinner, drapier fabrics for wider style legs that pull up. Now this fabric also creases like crazy. If you choose a print with a dark background, those creases will probably not be that noticeable when you're wearing the garment. There's a fine line between looking like you're wearing pajamas with printed pants. I would steer away from making, you know, that fake jumpsuit look. With rayon, you could end up looking like you're wearing pajamas. Just my opinion, of course. These are all my opinions about styling and things like that. You can probably take uh, the technical information about the fabric more to heart than my style options as such because they're my opinions it's not such an easy fabric to cut manipulate it'll stretch out of shape really easily i would take an extra precaution and stay stitch the waist while you're sewing before you go and attach the waistband and you might end up with a really stretched waistline that doesn't fit your waistband <laughs> So those are things to consider when you choose 100% rayon fabric. Now there are other rayon fabrics that are blended with other fibers and I have here to show you two cotton rayon blends. So the ones I have here are actually the same in different colorways and these are 60% cotton, 40% rayon. Cotton is a natural fiber, it's stronger, it also creases, it's stronger when wet. It shrinks way less than rayon does, so your cotton fabrics will probably shrink up to 5%, which is considerably less than the 15% that rayon shrinks. So when they mix these two together and blend them into a fabric, you get a nice drapey fabric because the rayon brings you that nice type of drape and coolness, you know, that sort of sensation of the fabric on you, but it has more strength that the cotton gives it. It's still gonna crease like crazy. <laughs> It is beautiful to touch. It is gorgeous. And you can see the selvages here on the side. This one has vertical stripes, usually solids. You'll probably find more vertical stripes in the opposite of knit fabric. You'll find the stripes always go horizontally. Um, but I'm always drawn to the vertical stripes because I find them more flattering for lines to go up and down your body. Now, when I bought this fabric, I didn't buy much of it. And I always thought I was going to make shorts with it. These could look like pyjama shorts, <laughs> but of course I didn't think that when I was buying it in the shop and I think these would totally look like pyjama pants. Just because of the colors here, not my cup of tea. <laughs> we all make mistakes when we buy fabrics and although the fabric has the right properties I, that I would make pants with, just the print is just totally not my thing, <laughs> no. Now I have this exact same fabric in a different colorway I bought them at the same time actually and black and white I could totally make pants with this fabric this is awesome this one is considered a lightweight fabric at about three ounces per square yard it's still really cool to wear now because this is a mix of rayon and cotton it's going to shrink less than the rayon I mentioned rayon shrinks about 15 percent because this is blended with cotton it'll shrink a bit less maybe 10 percent but it'll still have some shrinkage I have next to show you some rayon twill and we've already mentioned what rayon is but the word twill next to it it just means that it's a type of weave that was used to make this fabric it's not that twill is a fiber in itself because the same weaving technique can be made with other fibers so with twill cotton twill rayon twill different types of twill that you see if you look at the fabric closely you'll see these diagonal lines that are parallel to each other and form ribs 
so it's slightly textured and because of the type of weave it gives the fabric more strength uh, and more thickness it makes it more opaque so keeping the drape properties and the coolness and the touch and the hand of rayon it's just that because it's weaved differently it will be much more resistant so I think this is the most perfect, perfect fabric for pants. I love sewing pants with this type of fabric. It's just so good. It will still shrink about 15% lengthwise and across. If you want to try and make pants with lighter colors, this one will probably not be sheer as others. So you could try making some beige pants out of rayon twill and you won't see your underwear underneath probably. It will be an opaque fabric that's not sheer. Now I have here about five meters of rayon twill in black. I just picture these as flowing pants. A little bit creased because it's folded. Now I serge my edges there before washing it to prevent fraying. Rayon is not that strong in the wash. If you don't serge the edges, you end up losing a chunk. Fraying galore. So I get back, usually when I get back from the shops, I get back. I surge my edges and I chuck them in the wash just as fast as I can so that I don't forget. Also, if I'm looking at my stash and I see a fabric that has surged edges, it's a good indication for me saying, yep, it's been pre-washed, go ahead, use it, cut it, sew with it, you know? <laughs> when I see a fabric that is in my stash that has not been surged on the edges, I'm very suspicious and sometimes I don't remember and just to be on the safe side, I maybe have pre-washed fabric twice before. I love this fabric so much. And I love it for skirts, for pants, for tops, for dresses. You will get an elasticated waistband that is not bulky, that feels nice on the skin. You'll get a pant that drapes over your bottom super nicely, that won't cling to you. Because of the twill weave, it'll have strong seams, it'll last. It's just such a good fabric. If you're thinking, is this a good fabric? Yeah, just get yourself some rayon twill. Now I have two rayon twills here to show you that aren't solids. And I have already made myself a pair of shorts with this, Simplicity 1668. In that video, you will see a really full sew long on how to sew the easiest pants ever. Well, that is the fabric I used to film that tutorial. <laughs> And it's beautiful. It has the same feel and touch of the black one I've just shown you. The print is medium sized. There's nothing huge here. Having a pair of printed shorts is cool because I can pair it with tops, blouses that are solids. And I think it's a nice combination. If you're into color analysis, that I don't do by the way, but I know a lot of people are into that. Sometimes you can get away with wearing things on your lower half that are technically the right colors for you sometimes and if there is a color in the print that is a color that agrees with your face then you can wear that matching color on the top and have that disagreeing color on the bottom and it's not that noticeable against your face now i had another one that i bought exactly at the same time as this one i found a shop that had various rayon twill prints and yeah i couldn't like i had to restrain myself and i have a leftover of this one now just look at the half of that flower. That's only half of it. <laughs> the print on this was huge. And even though it has a dark background and all the colors that I love, it's just the size of the print that is just too massive. And if you try to cut pants here, you might end up with a huge flower all over your bottom or on the crotch. And I'm really sensitive to things placed in the wrong places. Um, I have made some pair of culottes once that had stripes right at the crotch and it looked really, really terrible. So I think fabric placement when you have large prints um, can really ruin your garment and you might not even notice <laughs> until after it's been cut out. So instead of making pants with this, which was a, a clear temptation for me, I chose to make a dress that had simple seams, very few seams actually. And even though it was exactly the same fabric, I wouldn't have made pants with it. Any style of pant, no matter what, wide leg, thinner leg, it's just that the print was just too huge and too bold. The next one I have to show you here is a tensile twill. It's sometimes called lyocell and it's a type of rayon that's just being weaved in a different way. It can sometimes look like denim, but it's not. You can find it in several colors. And you could also find them in light to medium weights. 
The one I have to show you here is a lightweight. It's only about four to five ounces per square yard and it's gray and it's beautiful. Look at this. It's super cool to touch. It's amazing. Because it's a twill type weave, it's stronger, it's durable, it's opaque. Now I looked at shrinkage for this type of fabric and it seems to be less than rayon twill. This is tensile twill. This one's described as three to 5% uh, shrinkage. It'll still shrink, so still wash it. You can see I've got whatever color threads there on the edge and gorgeous. I love this for pants and I've been, I don't have a large amount here, so I would probably make a pair of shorts and I'll probably stick to the ones that are a bit wider as well because of the drapiness of this one. Just my opinion, but I think it's a really appropriate fabric to make pants with, especially elasticated waist pants, because they're not gonna give you bulk at the waist. I've read comments about pants in several platforms about people's preconceived notion that elasticated waist pants give you bulk. Um, not necessarily, not necessarily. The ones I have made, I don't feel that they give a lot of bulk and it's got to do with the fabric choice. Now, all the patterns I mentioned in episode one, they all recommended light to medium weight fabrics. And if you look at the instructions, you know, they'll mostly mention the uh, lighter drapier fabrics will give you a more fluid look and more structured medium weight fabrics will give you a more structured look. So it depends on what you're going for. I would sort of prefer the lighter weight draping fabrics for pants <laughs> that I pull on because they just feel nicer on, lighter, and at the waist you're not going to feel that bulk. And I think this fabric is perfect. Lightweight tensile twill, it's beautiful. The next fabrics I have to show you are linen and linen blends. Now 100% linen is expensive typically. Uh, it is a natural fiber, it's strong when it's wet, it's a strong fiber, it creases like no tomorrow, you just look at it and it's already creased. <laughs> it's a cool fabric to wear, breathable, it does shrink about 10%, so definitely needs pre-washing, and it's, it's just considered a luxurious type fabric, and even the most simple garments, when the fabric choice has been linen, it just makes the garment look so much better, you can make a simple tank and just because it's linen it's going to look amazing compared to just if you make it in a solid rayon it's going to look like pajamas you know it's just the fabric is so nice and i have one 100 linen here to show you now this has been pre-washed and lazy me i forgot to serge the edges but i know that it has been pre-washed because it's all frayed <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't be like that. This fabric was sent to me um, by a friend in the States and I consider it precious fabric by this point. I've had it on my table, looking at it and placing pattern pieces on them. And I, yeah, it's turned out to be one of a precious fabric and I need to stop that mindset and just get it sewn. <laughs> it is beautiful and you can see the rumpled texture in it. Look, if I touch it, it'll just be totally, totally creased and wrinkled. It feels really cool to touch. I love this fabric so much. I am a person that wears a lot of skirts and I think if I love this fabric so much and if it's too precious, I think it'll get way more wear as a skirt than pants. But this would be perfect. This is, you know, you can find 100% linen in different weights, um, light to medium weights. I would say I wouldn't want to make pants in linen that is over eight ounces per square yard. I would probably leave the heavier linens for jackets. Now you will find linen blends that are also beautiful and they bring the cost of the fabric down of course and because it's blended with other fibers it just sometimes improves the properties that linen already has. And I have here different types of linen rayon blends. These lighter weight are about three to four ounces per square yard and they have a higher content of rayon, 70% rayon, 30% linen. So they have the look of linen, they look really nice. They are very cool and breathable, um, but then they have this amazing softness and drape of rayon. This is just amazing. This is the most amazing zebra print. Look at it. Let's see if you can see it. It is gorgeous fabric. And I would make pants out of this for sure. I would have no issue making pants. 
but because it is a lighter weight fabric and it's mainly composed of rayon, it just has 30% linen, I would probably choose the wider leg options for pants with this one. Not extremely wide, but I wouldn't make fitted pants out of a fabric like this. I think pants that are made in black and white print can be really versatile because you can match tops of all colors, you know, up here and they still match because this matches everything. This is left over from making a dress with princess seams that I've shown a while back. I love this. I would totally make pants out of this. And I think these solid linen rayon blends look amazing with top stitching. I think if you go through that extra step of doing the contrast top stitching, it just brings the garment up a notch and just highlights the little seams. If you have really pretty pockets, in the design and you top stitch them, it's just gonna make them look super pretty. This won't give you bulk on the waistband and they'll flow really nicely over the legs. I love this for pants. Now the next ones I'll show you are medium weight. These are about seven to eight ounces per square yard. These are 55% linen, 45% rayon and they're more structured. This is a dark red. Out of all the pant styles I showed you yesterday, I would make the slimmer tapered leg versions with these. Just in my opinion, for example, the free range slacks have a version with a slimmer leg. I would probably do the slimmer leg with this one. Also the Arden pants from uh, Helen's Closet, totally, totally, I would make it with these, the Allegro pants as well. The cowder pants from Cashmere that have a wider flowing leg, I probably would not choose this fabric for that because it's just too structured. I don't like structured wide leg pants, if you get what I mean, but you might, you know? It's not that it's not gonna work. I have this one, quite a large print, black and white, same fabric composition, it's just being printed. I would totally make pants out of this. I could match it with bright colors on the top and it would be a beautiful pair of pants that would not go unnoticed. I have one fabric to show you of a linen cotton blend. Now, I would say this is a lightweight, maybe from four to five ounces, and it would be good for a shirt. It's like a shirting. You'll find some men's shirts in this type of fabric blend. So the composition percentages could change. I'm not actually sure what the proportion here, to linen to cotton is. It does look like linen and, you know, because it's mixed with cotton, it creases less. So it's not as crumpled and sloppy. Like if I do that, it'll, it'll crease a little bit, but not terribly so. You could get away with wearing your garment during the day and not looking all, all wrinkled up. And because it's got cotton, it's strong and it'll shrink less. And I've made a skirt with this. I have some left, not enough to make a, a pair of pants or anything, probably a top. <laughs> but I wanted to show you the fabric. It's beautiful. It's super appropriate for pants. Very fresh. They would be so fresh uh, to wear in the summer. You know, capri length or, you know, and it, it's not a heavyweight fabric. It will cope with the waistband and the elastic really well. So if you can get your hands on some cotton linen, lightweight go for it it's a great choice now i have some different types of cottons to show you cotton is a really nice fabric it's natural all the ones i have here are not with polyester they're just cottons and they can have different weights and be weaved in different ways it's a really strong fabric just about three to five percent uh, of shrinkage it doesn't drape at all <laughs> they're very stiff they breathe they're cool to wear they crease as well, but not as much as linen does, but it does, you know, cotton does crease. Chambray is usually used more for shirts. It's a lightweight cotton, it's 100% cotton. You'll find uh, some have little patterns on them, you know, in the weave, and you can find them in different colors. It tends to want to look like denim, but it's not. <laughs> and this is one that I have in a non-traditional color. You can see that it's quite stiff you know it doesn't have that lovely drape that the rayon has or the linen rayon blends do maybe you can see the texture on this one you know i would see a man's shirt made in this beautiful but you can also make pants with this for sure you can apply a bit of pressure to the seams i mean not terrible pressure but you can make the slimmer style legs with this one 
and have a closer fit to the body. Wider legs, I wouldn't choose these fabrics that don't drape for that because they'll just like stick out and the, yeah, I, it's not a look I'm going for, but you might be. I have this other chambray that it has been embroidered on top. Because of the embroidered feature, it makes it more medium weight than lightweight. It makes it quite structured as well, look. I would make a pair of shorts with this. I think structured shorts are really nice looking. They look nice and crisp and smart. I have two quilting weight cottons here. Now, I had to really look in my stash for quilting weight cotton because I'm obviously not a quilter. I, I've done a failed attempt at quilting. It's not my jam, so I don't have a large collection of any types of these cottons. But I do have two. <laughs> one is just plain black and the other one has a crazy print. And quilting cotton could work for pants. You know, they are in the four to five ounce per square yard. They could be really high quality, 100% cotton. They definitely need to be pre-washed if you want to use them for garment sewing. I know quilters don't pre-wash, but actually for garments, you need to wash things. <laughs> I have black here, very boring, very stiff. It does not drape and I would probably make shorts with this. I don't know that I would want to make pants out of quilting cotton. It's just not a fabric that I see in my eyes as for garments that much. I have only one piece of cotton twill. Now I mentioned that twill was a type of weave that creates diagonal textured lines that are parallel to each other. It gives the fabric strength. I have this purple one. Now I, I don't know that I would choose this for a pull-on pant. I would probably choose this better for a type of pant that is super fitted to the body, like jeans, or just pants that don't have elastic. You know, um, pants that have darts and a curved waistband and a zipper, that type of pant, I would probably choose this fabric for that style and not for these wider, flowing, uh, pull-on, elasticated pants. Uh, probably wouldn't be my first choice. The next ones I have to show you are lightweight denims. Now, you will find denims in loads and loads of weights. And I'm talking about the denims that are non-stretch. I'm not talking about stretch denim here at all. I don't think stretch denim is a fabric that will work with these pants or look very nice at all. Stretch denim is usually more for really tight, tight pants, like tight jeans, fitted stuff, you know? So don't consider stretch denim. And I think 100% cotton denim that is also like a twill weave will work perfect this is a great one you can see the selvage of denim always looks like that and you can clearly see that one side is lighter the wrong side is lighter than the darker side here it's pretty light in comparison to like those hard wearing denims that weigh 13 to 14 ounces so you'll find them in light weights like this one and then you have medium weights around the eight to nine ounce per square yard weight. For these types of pull-on pants with elasticated waistbands, the light ones, yes, I think they would work super nice. Imagine having these pants with those beautifully top-stitched pockets and hems. I think they would look really, really nice and classic and you could pair them with all the things in your wardrobe and it's a good choice. Now, I have a pair of pants that are, it's, it's gonna be a refashion actually. These are made with lightweight denim. So I've cropped them, they weren't exactly what I wanted, uh, so I've removed some of the features. But this would be very similar to how the Allegro pants look. You know, if I hadn't removed the waistband, the, the, the waistband here was super ugly. Um, because they have thrifted pants, of course. But the denim on this is lightweight. And it's beautiful. Denim won't drape, but they won't flow. They are structured. So I would probably choose lightweight denim for the more structured slimmer leg styles. Denim does get softer and nicer the more you wash. And about denim shrinking, it's controversial. Of course, you need to pre-wash it, but denim doesn't shrink that much at all. <laughs> and when you say, you know, you've worn your pants and they've felt loose and they give after a few wears, it's just because the fibers there are just relaxing. And that's what cotton does. So when you wash it, it doesn't mean that it shrinks, it just goes back to how it originally was. Now I have some fabrics here that you might think are good choices and I'll just tell you why I wouldn't. Now I have this 
beautiful silky 100% rayon in solid blue I would not make pants with this oh no way I would not make pants with this it, it, it would just show every every rumpled crease that you're gonna get when you sit down for the first time when you're wearing your pants when you get up you're gonna have your bottom your knees everything's gonna be creased it's gonna look terrible you're gonna look super sloppy and it's just not a good look you know I would not choose that for pants I have one fabric here that I don't know why I got it I really dislike this fabric I mean I like it but I just don't like it at the same time <laughs> and this is crinkle rayon it's a rayon I'd say this rayon is heavier weight than the ones I've shown you just now the 100% rayons I don't know if you can see that texture there so this would be about a six to seven ounce. You can feel how it drapes and it's just a heavier fabric. It has a beautiful drape and it has a textured and airy type feel, very loosely woven. So, you know, this has been surged on the edge. I washed it and in these ones, you'll find a lot of shrinking. It'll shrink about 25% in the length and the width. The next fabric I'll mention in a few words, I don't have any to show you because I just don't have any, is cotton lawn. Controversial, I know maybe a lot of people would think cotton lawn is a really nice fabric for pants, but I just think it's too lightweight. It just does not drape at all. It could easily look like pajamas and I know they actually sell lots of pajama sets made out of cotton lawn. Beautiful fabric, nice and fresh, beautiful prints all those things, but it wouldn't be my choice for making these style of pants. Same as cotton poplin, that's more associated with making shirts and blouses, and even like your, your sheets, your linen for your bed. <laughs> so, you know, when I see cotton poplin around, I'm like, yeah, I don't like that for garments in general. The other fabric I would definitely stay away from for pants is double gauze or any type of gauze fabric. Now this is a type of 100% cotton that is super loosely woven and double gauze, it's like two layers of it. Because it's loosely woven, when you wash it, it'll shrink like no tomorrow. It'll even shrink more than the rayon, the crinkled rayon that I showed you. You know, you could buy two yards and end up with like almost a yard less. <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. When you wash it, it'll just like get really compact and it'll lose length and width. And because it's so loosely woven, you might have a small piece there after pre-washing. You cut your pant according to your size. You put it on at first. It feels nice, really comfortable and fresh. And it looks pretty because, you know, it looks pretty. But, you know, that's going to give. And it will probably stretch out one to two inches extra. And you're going to end up with huge pants that are going to be baggy wherever you sit down on the bottom, on the on the knees, you know. This is my personal opinion. I would leave that for garments that you would wear on the top, probably tops, uh, blouses, those peasant style that are meant to be loose, you know, those types of flowy type garments. Actually, this fabric doesn't drape, so it's not going to be nice and flowy either. Um, so I wouldn't choose those for pants myself, in my opinion. And the other fabric I wouldn't want to choose for these pants is a cotton drill. I have mentioned uh, mentioned it before when I showed you my cotton twill. Uh, it's just too thick, too structured, more geared for workwear. And maybe I would use that for jeans and really tight fitting styles, but not these uh, easy to sew pull on ones that I'm focusing on. I really want to clarify that. I'm talking about the pull-on pant that could have a slimmer or a wider leg that is easy to sew, easier to fit than others. And if you've never made pants, I, I think these styles are the first that could give you a successful result with less work, maybe less fitting issues than the ones that are fitted. I've shown you jeans on the channel uh, pants that have facings on the inside or curved waistbands with zippers and all that I think you could maybe go ahead and try those after you've had a few successful easier type pants to make I think skipping the step and from never making pants yourself ever to just go and make yourself your first pair of pants and making them jeans I think it could give you some frustration because if you're not aware of your own body and how your body is in relation to patterns and how to adjust for that it could be super frustrating and be a lot of work 
Instead, these styles that I've mentioned that are pull on are much more forgiving in the feet and are much easier to adjust. So about fitting and adjusting, <laughs> that is what the next episode in this series will be about. I'm planning to do quite a practical in-depth fitting video about pants and I want to simulate a lot of fitting issues. Even though they aren't my own, I'm going to create them for myself to show you how you can go about them. And I need muslin fabric for that. So I'm waiting for a delivery. Although with these styles, I think the fitting issues would be less than with the other fitted, fitted styles, as I mentioned. So we'll have a fun practical video next and keep your eyes open for that one, the episode three of this Let's Make Easy Pants series. And of course, you will be seeing other videos in between about other things as well. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments what fabrics have worked for you in the past for pants, if you've made pants and what fabrics do you think have not been the best choice. I love to know your experiences and I'll see you very soon with another sewing video. Bye and happy sewing.